This is my 2000 Grand Cherokee. It's got an Iron Rock off-road 4-inch benchmark lift kit on it with 285, 75, 16-inch tires. So I guess I need to go out and get some larger bump stops because this tire is rubbing big time. I can't go far, any farther forward without damaging the tire or damaging the vehicle. So I need to go buy some bump stops before I go out and play again. Kind of sucks. And that's with the sway bars disconnected. I actually do not disconnect my sway bars, so I'll hook them up, see if it's any change. But I know the rear here is going to rub anyway, so I definitely need bump stops in the rear for sure. So those sway bars are connected. It was coming pretty close to rubbing with my other size tires on there. Putting some three and a half inch bump stops on my Jeep today. That's what they look like. It's the new bump stop here. Pretty easy to install. You just need to drill and tap a hole for the new bolt. Alright, first thing is go ahead and get this tire off of here. Alright, let's go ahead and disconnect your sway bar at the top here. Just completely take that bolt all the way out on both sides. Loosen this top one up here and take the bottom bolt all the way out for your shock and let that just kind of dangle loose just Loosen this one up Take the bottom all the way out There we go At this point most of you should be able to lower that axle down far enough to get the spring out of there because I'm using two inch spacers along with these bigger springs, I'm going to jack the axle all the way back up as far as I can and put some coil spring compressors on there. Alright, well that's as high as my little jack goes. I don't want to scratch my springs all up. I'm going to go ahead and wrap them with this. There we go. Use some coil spring compressors. Let's go ahead and put those on there. Let's make sure they're kind of even together. You don't want them kind of like in a V shape. Got to have them pretty much on opposite sides of each other. Go ahead and tighten them down a bit. So the more you have the spring compressed, the easier it's going to be putting it back in once you have this bump stop in there. So now that I have it compressed, I'm going to go ahead and lower the jack slowly. Damn, that stretched a lot. Fuck. If you're having trouble at this point getting your spring in or out of there, jack up the opposite side of the axle and that should give you enough room. Alright, let's go ahead and get the spring out of here. Carefully watch your hands around these so it doesn't explode apart on you. There we go. Set this rocket off to the side. Okay, this is the bolt that they gave you. It's way too big to come in here. So you're going to have to drill this out. I used a 3 8 inch drill bit to drill this out. And we're going to have to use a 7 16 14 tap to tap it, tap it. So let's go ahead and drill and thread this out. All right, so go ahead and spray a little bit of lube up in there. There we go. Get your 3 8 inch drill bit and go to town. Try and make it as straight as possible. There we go. It's all the way through. There we go. Now that you got that all the way through there, let's go ahead and tap it. I went to Harbor Freight and got a super cheap kit. This was like 10 bucks and it instantly broke here. So this does not work. I'm gonna have to figure out something else to use. Broke it instantly on the other side. So, so let's go ahead and set that to the side. So I'm gonna return that. 
All right, again, spray a little bit of lube up in there. There we go. See if I get this to work, even though it's broken. Apply some pressure as you're turning and try and keep it straight as you can. Got the seat in there. That's the hardest part is just getting it to seat in there. Once it's seated in there, just kind of take your time, back it off every couple of cranks, and keep it going. I continue threading it until this threads really nice and easily both ways. So see how it's going inwards all the way? Let's take it back out all the way. Nice and easy. Sweet. There we go. Go ahead and clean this up. Now that you got that hole tapped, go ahead and take your new bump stop and bolt it in. Just start it by hand. There we go. That's actually threads in there so nice. There we go. Tighten that bad boy down. Yep, that's it right there. All right, let's go ahead and put this back on and make sure you line it back into place properly. There we go. Make sure it's lined up right. There we go. Watch your fingers. Don't get your fingers in there. the jack down on the other side a little bit. Now let's go ahead and jack this side of the axle back up so you get these off of here. And as you're doing so, make sure it's all aligned in there properly. Good. As high as my jack goes, so from here, just gotta take them off. All right, let's go ahead and get the shock mounted in there. Easiest way to do that is just go ahead and let the axle down just slightly enough to the right position. A little bit more, slides into position there. Raise it up as needed. Very easy.
That guy's done. Yeah, super easy. Just put your sway bar back into place here. Get that buttoned up. Tighten this one up. Let's put your wheel on. Let's go four wheeling. 